morning, living faith. Welcome to the 1030 service. We are glad you chose living faith to come and worship with us. Father in heaven, we love you this morning. Let the power of your Holy Spirit saturate this room. Anoint Pastor Randy as he comes to divide the word of truth. And let our spirit man be open to receive that word as we stand. Lord, the worship we bring is born in song that we sing. It's a reflection of our ever-changing life. The best we have to offer. We don't just lift up our hands, Lord, we lift up our lives. For we know that you are worthy of all praise. We do our life song. Children of the King, sing, you are worthy of all honor, glory, praise, and power, King of the nation. You are holy God i 
Amen. Amen. Take your seats. Take your seats. Thank you for coming today. Ed don't have a job. Don't pay me your bill. Won't buy you a home in Beverly Hills. Won't pick your life. special let me get the important stuff out of the way first this is the really important stuff right here mom this is Pat Jamie Slocum's mother and uh, she's here with of course her son is here and uh, she's here what do you think of your boy he's amazing he is? he's amazing God is really using him and in spite of the trials and stuff that you go through which everybody goes through you know, you just pick yourself up every day and you keep moving on, thanks to the Lord. And that's what Jamie is doing. And he's an amazing writer, producer, and singer. And he's more, t he, <laughs> he's very humble. He doesn't take credit for a lot of stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. And you, I bet you pray for him every day. I, more than once. <laughs> more. <laughs> yeah. Now, who's this lovely lady here? This is a friend of ours that we just came to know. Uh huh. So. And she's taking care of the tape, uh, the CD table. Along with you, Helping me, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a joy to have her. Yeah. Well, we better watch her close then. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And you are Diana. That's right, Diana. Good to have you here. All right. We could go on and on and on, but I think we need to get Jamie up here. What do you think? All right, ladies and gentlemen. Jamie Slocum is here, and let me tell you how good it went. There is one song, You Are the Reason, you really need to hear, some, his newest one. Good morning. Can you guys all say, God can use someone like you? One more time. God can use someone like you. And so when you get to the you part, if you're having a bad day or something, you can either point to yourself, or if you see somebody mildly attractive in the audience, you can point to them and, you know, have coffee or something. 
see you Wednesday at the barbecue. <laughs> so I, I've been to Nashville a long time, and when I first got there, I uh, heard about a commercial that was going to take place, and I thought, okay, this is, this is the way out of Chili's, because I worked at Chili's when I first started there. And I wrote this song, and I worked really hard on it, and I got a letter of rejection about two weeks later, which I came to know quite well. <laughs> You ever go to Nashville and do music, you're going to get rejected quite a lot. So. so I didn't have money for therapy, and so I just turned that song into a, this song. <laughs> God can use someone like you every day in so many ways. No matter where you are in this world, God can use See, now you know why it didn't take, you know. <laughs> God can use every day in so many ways. No matter where you are in this world, God can use. No matter where you are in this world, God can use. No matter where you are in this world, cocoa puffs are so good for you. It turns the milk chocolatey. See, I thought it could have been really a really nice little catchphrase, but <laughs> didn't happen. <laughs> so I'm going to do this song. We're all going to sing it together. Um, but I'm going to do, I didn't do this in the first service, and since everybody's so fun at this church, I thought, I think they're up for this. So I'm going to do a little dance move. That I'm doing one dance move. That's all I ever do. <laughs> and I'm going to go, no matter where you are in this world. I'm going to go like this. And you guys go, whoo. Okay. <laughs> Let's practice. Or you could do nothing and have me just go. And then I'd look really dumb. <laughs> Which happens a lot. So. No matter where you are in this world, God can use. All right. So everybody stand up. We're going to sing this. And, you know, let's do a little dance move. <laughs> All right, you guys, just kind of clap along and sing out and listen to the. I like it. Yeah, look at look it. I like that. That's good. <laughs> The choices in life get so hard. Why do some people always get the ace card? Just when you think you're winning the game, you do your best with what you've been given. Hope and praying, you're dreaming and you're wishing that someday soon your life will change. Well, I know that God can use every day in so many ways. No matter where you are in this world, God can use someone like you every day in so many ways. No matter where you are in this world, God can use you guys are so great. No one believes in what you're doing. You work so hard, but things just aren't moving the way they should. The way you always prayed they would. Well, nothing that matters ever comes easy. Only the love of Christ is completely given away. Yeah, with nothing more to pay. Let's sing it out. Because I know that God can use every day in so many ways. No matter where you are in this world, God can use someone like you every day. No matter where you are in this world, God can use 
someone like you Someone like you Alright guys, other count three, Sienna. One, two, three, because God can use Every day, so many ways. No matter where you are in this world, you someone like you. Every day, so many ways. No matter where you are in this world, God can use. No matter where we. God can use. All right, one more time, big finish. No matter where we are in this world, God can use. You and you. Amen. Please be seated. I, um, I have this new record that um, I've been working on for <laughs> a long time. <laughs> About three years, I think. Where's Dwayne? Dwayne? See here? He's getting ready to do some music. I'm just going to don't worry about how long it takes because the better it is, the longer it'll take. Because once it's out, <laughs> you can't get it back. <laughs> so um, this is a one of the, probably the best record I've ever made. And just from a producer standpoint, just some of the songs I think are really uh, special. Um, started in a happy place, then kind of went to a sad place, and then went to a happy place and a sad place. So this record's really kind of how our lives are. They're like roller coasters, aren't they? <coughs> and um, I've been messing around with a song in, in Nashville on the piano, and I had this lyric that just came that, you are the reason I'm still here. And when we go through those hardships, the only thing, sometimes the only thing we can say is, you're the reason I'm still here. Anybody else would have left me long ago? You guys ever feel abandoned? <laughs> um, so I sat down and I, I had that song, and I remember my mom actually heard it early on, and she went, "That's such a great song," you know. <laughs> and believe me, when she says it, I know, because sometimes she'll go, "That's not such a great song," you know. <laughs> but um, but she went, "Oh, I really like that," you know. And I said, "All right, well, I, you know, I don't know if it's good or not, but." Anyway, and a couple couple weeks later, um, I got a call from a, a friend of mine. I, have you guys ever heard of a band called Chicago? <laughs> Apparently, they've done something. I, I I don't know who they are, but I was like, Chicago. <laughs> I'm joking. But, um, so a friend of mine is the lead singer in that group, and he said, hey, why don't you come on over and let's work on a song? And I go, well, I just happen to have this song idea for a song. So I went over to Jason's house. And we sat down, I said, hey, I just want to tell you that when I was raised in Phoenix, I was 12, 12 and I saw you in concert. He goes, don't even say that. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> so um, I remember getting dropped off. This is kind of random. I'm sorry, Pastor. But um, I remember this is, how, this is how things were different back then. But I remember somebody, was, it was Compton Terrace. Was that what the place was called? I just had somebody drop me off there for the concert. <laughs> And said, I'll get home. <laughs> I had faith that I would get home. So, and that was in Deer Valley. So that was a long way to go. But anyway, I got home. But I had to see Chicago. So anyway, years later, here I am at his house. And we write this song. And he said, man, this is great, Jamie. And I go, why don't we go in the studio and cut this thing? You know? And he goes, really? And I go, yeah, let's just bring the guys in and we'll cut it. And he said, all right, I'm game. I go, well, will you play bass and, and sing on it with me? And he goes, absolutely, that'd be great. So a um, couple days later, we went in the studio, and I had all these guys in there playing, and I was just kind of like, this is so cool, <laughs> trying to uh, pretend like this was normal for me, you know, little goofy Christian artist, right? So the only person that I didn't have on, this, on the session when we were cutting was uh, the acoustic player, and he was a good friend of mine named Scott Dente, you know, and um, great acoustic guitar player. So we had him in there. He had no idea who anybody it was in the studio. So he jokes around a lot, and he goes, Jamie. And he says this in the headphones when everybody's getting ready to cut. I'm at the mic, and I'm directing traffic and telling people what to play. And um, he goes, hey, Jamie, this sounds like a bad Chicago song. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, 
I pointed to Jason. I go, hey, Scott, do you know Jason? He goes, hey, hey, Jason, how are you? I go, Jason, what band do you sing in? He goes, that would be Chicago. <laughs> and Scott goes, can I borrow a shoe and put it in my <laughs> So anyway, uh, we played, we tracked it, it came out really well, I finished it up, I, I put an orchestra on it, and I just love the message of it, and um, um, I actually ran into Jason about two weeks ago in a mall in Thousand Oaks, California, just random, and he goes, man, that song is amazing. So I'm going to attempt to sing this song for you guys, and it's with the help of these guys, and I hope you like the song, it's um, on my new album called You Are the Reason with Jason from Chicago playing and singing and here we go. <coughs> I finally made it through Lord I owe it all to you and For the first time in my life I feel low past is far behind There's nothing weighing on my mind And I'm just glad to know that you have found me oh. Cause you are the reason I'm still here Anybody else would have left me long ago And the last piece broke apart and somehow you have put me back together now every time I lose my way you're always there to save the day Cause you are the reason I'm still here anybody else would have left me long ago and when Sometimes I hate singing that song. <laughs> Get emotional. Um, thank you. Nobody wants to see a grown man cry on stage now, do they? Um, this is a song that many of you might be familiar with. I wrote this a few years ago. It's called Dependence. And uh, I wrote this song, uh, and I turned it in my record company and they hated it they said this is terrible this is just an absolutely terrible song and I go really so I think it's kind of good um, you know been around the block a little bit played some songs and um, <laughs> so I uh, wrote the song and I just said look just put it out there and you're probably right it's probably terrible but this is all I got this is where I am this is my heart this is my life so so Okay, oh pardon me. 
So about a month later, they call me and they go, hey, guess what? And I go, what? And they go, your song's number one. <laughs> and I go, oh, well, that's great. Thanks for, thanks for calling, you know. And, uh, and then about three weeks later, they said, guess what, Jamie? We are so excited that we told you to record this song. It's still number one. And at week 11, it was up for song of the year, Dove Award thing, you know, all that messy business. The guy actually said, I am so glad that I personally told you, when you didn't want to do this song, <laughs> to record this song. And I was like, you know what? God bless you. I am too. Thank you so much. What are you going to do? You know? So anyway, uh, the song was up for song of the year. And um, uh, there was another fella that was up for song of the year too that year. A guy named, he's a scruffy bearded guy named Michael W. Smith. I don't know, have you guys ever heard of this guy? I don't know. Apparently he's like Chicago. He's done some things, you know. God keeps putting me people <laughs> that are way better than me. And um, I just always feel like a dork. I'm like, why am I here? <laughs> so anyway, Michael, you know, maybe it's because he has a 5 o'clock shadow and I just started shaving a couple weeks ago. I'm not sure, but he, uh, he, he won for song of the year. And I was like, Michael, you know, you got like 60 of these things. I just need one as a paperweight. <laughs> but anyway, so this is the song, Dependence. And um, thanks for letting me come sing for you. And uh, I'm looking forward to the barbecue. Um, that's going to be so good. <laughs> so, and I'll bring my Lone Ranger Max as well. So, so anyway, if you guys know, this is called Dependence. It goes like this. This is the life I've always wanted. To know the Prince of Peace And to feel my faith restored As your grace surrounds me This is a day of new beginnings This is where my freedom starts And now death has lost its sting Oh, Jesus, how can I thank you? Just to know, just to know that you love me. It gives me hope to carry on. What can this world do to me? Sing it with me, please. Just to know, just to know that you're with me. On all these roads I travel on. When all I have is gone, Lord, I confess. My dependence on you There is a lightness in my laughter There is a joy inside my soul And my heart is overwhelmed Oh Jesus, how can I thank you Just to know, just to know that you love me Gives me hope to carry on. What can this world do to me? No, no. Just to know, just to know that you're with me. On all these roads I travel on. And all I have is gone. Oh, I confess. My dependence on you. Dependence on you. Just to know, just to know that you love me. Oh Lord, it gives me hope to carry on. Cause you are the one thing that I can turn to. And just to know, just to know that you're with me. And all these roads I travel on, oh Lord, you are the one thing that I can turn to. And just to know, just to know that you love me, gives me hope to carry on. There's nothing this world can do, Lord, I confess. 
focus on you, Lord, I confess my dependence on you. Dependence on you. Uh, two weeks ago, I began a little series entitled Feed Your Faith. Entitled now, last, Feed Your Faith. And last week we took a break because it was July 4th and I talked about uh, our country. And I want to take a moment right now to pray for uh, the loss in Dallas. Terrible. Just terrible. I don't want to talk about anything else. All the other protests, I don't want to talk about it. Uh, I'm appalled at what happened by ambush, orchestrated by the devil himself, uh, shooting uh, 12 officers purposely, planned intent to murder. And five of those precious officers who swore to protect the citizens in this uh, nation, including the ones that shot them, uh, uh, died. So I want to pray. Let's, can we pray together? Would you just for a moment? Uh, Lord, we pray for this terrible tragedy, and we know you weep over it yourself. And I pray right now for the families that lost uh, their loved one in this ambush, this shooting, despicable act, cowardly act. And I pray, Lord, that you are comforting uh, Dallas. We stand with Dallas. We stand with the Dallas PD. We stand with the PD throughout this nation. And, what, Lord, we ask for, yes, everything needs work, Lord, and you're working you're working diligently on it, but if we would just turn to you, not turn to color, but turn to you, not turn to race, but turn to you, that you would unify, you would bring a healing as you said you would do if your people would pray. Well, we're praying now, Lord. We pray for a healing for Dallas and, and for our country, but we pray for those the loss of life there. Oh, Lord, we pray for their families. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. This is a timely message because in these last days, we need strong faith like never before. For times like this, we need our faith refined. We need our faith strong. We need an increase in our life of faith. Now, we learned the first time uh, that as I began this, that faith is of God, that he is the author and finisher of faith. It's not the same as believing. Believing is of man. Faith is of God. And I showed you in Ephesians 2.8. So, Kyle, let's begin. Quick recap, Ephesians 2.8. Faith is a gift from God. Believing is of man. It's your decision when you hear. It's your decision to choose. And it's your decision whether or not to believe. But faith is of God. And faith is given to us by God. Look what it says here. Go ahead, Kyle. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So we're saved by grace through faith. And this faith is not of ourselves that saves us. It is the gift of God. Now, now look at this scripture. That every man, every person is given a measure of faith when they believe. The initial measure of faith when you believe in Jesus Christ. The gospel. Romans 12.3, please. Boy, I like that song. I can't get it out of my head. You are the reason. Because it applies to so many of our lives. Okay, go ahead. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So God is the source of faith. God is, uh, he has given us the giver, he's the giver of faith, a gift of faith. And what has he given us? A measure of faith. The initial measure of faith to be saved. Now, with that measure of faith comes a responsibility for us to Enhance it, to grow it, to increase.
increase it. Just like if I gave you a plant, now it's on you. I give you a gift of a plant, a beautiful plant. Just visualize a beautiful plant, a carnation, beautiful, and I gave it to you. And I say it's all yours. Now, what's your responsibility? To take care of it, to water it, to nurture it, and to see it grow, right? Faith is the same way. God has given us beautiful, most holy faith. Now, according to 2 Thessalonians 1, 3, faith can, that measure of faith can increase, can grow. Go ahead. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet ex because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. So faith can grow. So he gives a gift of faith. Now, we want it to grow, don't you? You don't want it to stay. If you let that plant stay alone, it will wither. It will not produce anything, no color, no life, no nothing. But when you, but when you water it, when you nurture it, uh, something mighty happens. It, it's stronger, becomes alive, colorful, beautiful. And so it is with our faith. Uh, let me tell you, people of faith are beautiful people. Turn to somebody and say, you're a beautiful people, person, people. You're, be you're beautiful people. Romans 1.17, please, Kyle, quickly. Romans 1.17 talks about levels of faith, going from level to level. Increasing, growing is going from level to level. Go ahead. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. From faith to faith to faith. There are different levels of faith. The Bible, Jesus talks about them all. And they're all in that first CD. No faith, little faith, strong faith, weak faith, and great faith. There are different levels of faith. Now, with that, uh, how do we increase it? How do we see it grow? Well, it's important that we do nurture our faith and do uh, see it grow and make it grow. And I'll show you how. We started the other week, but <coughs> something mighty happens. Not only do you become stronger, able to resist every flaming dart and arrow of the enemy because we hold the shield of faith, but... God reveals himself more and more to you. As you go from faith to faith, God reveals more of himself to you. Now remember, I used the analogy of math in school. Does a kindergartner or a first grader, is he introduced to geometry and trigonometry? No. He's induced to the elementary things. But as he increases grades... More and more of math is revealed to him or her, right? So it is with God. As you go from faith to faith to faith, he reveals more of himself to you. That alone would be a motive to nurture and grow your faith, to know more of him, of his righteousness. Okay. How do you grow faith? Well, you have to feed it. You, God has provided the things for us to feed our faith. Just like in the natural, God has in the natural to feed our bodies, to keep good health and well-being. The five food groups are bread, fruit, vegetables, milk, and chocolate. No, no. Meat. And they say that these five food groups, eating from these, will keep you strong and well. Clarity of mind, strong body, void of sickness and disease. Is that right? Yeah. Well, God, just as God has provided things to keep you healthy in your body, he's provided these five spiritual uh, food groups to keep your faith strong, to keep your spiritual walk strong. And we began with the first one the other week, and the first spiritual food group to eat from is the Word of God. And guess what, people? You can eat all you want. 
There's no limit. Unlimited. Uh, his buffet, the Bible is God's buffet. You can come and eat, receive, meditate, all you want, anytime you want. God's buffet of his word is open 24, 7, 7 days a week. Yeah. Often the word of God is spoken of as food in the Bible. Look at Matthew 4.4. 4. Go ahead, Kyle. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth so of God. So man doesn't live by bread alone, which was the staple of that day to keep life in your mortal body. But he says, by, there's something else you need to keep your spiritual life going. And that is the word of God. Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God from Genesis to Revelation. Do you all believe the Bible is the word of God? That it has proceeded out of his mouth? And that it's all God's word without error, without compromise from Genesis all the way to Revelation? Really? All of it? You mean you haven't picked and choose what you like and don't like? And every bit of it is good for you. And will bring mental, physical, and most of all, spiritual health. It will strengthen your faith. Check this out. Check this out. 1 Peter 2.2 2 also refers to a food, milk, uh, as the word of God. Go ahead. 1 Peter 2.2. 2. I need to get going here, Kyle. Go ahead. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. So drink up the milk of the word so you can grow by it. Your faith can grow by it, right? That's what it says there. Romans 10, 17 says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Acts 6, 2 says, as the word increased, the, uh, many were converted and were obedient to the faith. That's what happens when the word is increased. See, we need more of the word increased in the pulpits. Less storytelling, more word in the pulpits. Because with the increase of the word of God, people are getting saved and becoming obedient to the faith. So we move on to the next food group. This is good. Perfect timing. Next food group. It's found in Jude 1.20. It's prayer. Prayer will increase your faith. The more you pray, the more your faith will become strong. Can you see the reason in that? The more you touch the hem of his garment, the more you spend time with the author and finisher of your faith, your faith will become strong. Yes. Look what it says here in Jude one twenty. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. We must partake from this spiritual food group called prayer every day. Just like you eat, what, two, three, four, five, six times a day? Uh, feel free to pray six, seven times a day. Feel free to go to God's buffet six, seven times a day to keep yourself healthy, your mind clear, your eyes focused, and your faith strong. Amen. Pray. And when you pray, pray the word. There's two food groups in one. When you pray the word, you hear it. And faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. <laughs> Lord, you said you promised by your stripes I am healed. Woo! Faith just exploded within me. And that's what moves mountains. That's what brings the healing. That's what causes heaven to move on your behalf. Jude one twenty. Did you read it yet, Kyle? Read it again. I don't remember you reading it. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So how do we build up, increase our most holy faith? Notice it's most holy faith, just not, well, let's talk about faith. Most holy faith. How does it happen? By praying. Now it says praying in the Holy Ghost. 
spirit-led prayers, and it might even mean more than that. That's another subject. But if the, the, the focus is praying will build up your faith. Do you see it there? 1 Thessalonians 3.10. 1 Thessalonians 3.10 says, Are you eating right now? Come on, you're hearing, listening, receiving the word? Well, then you're eating. You're feeding your faith. Go ahead. Night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. So praying perfects what is lacking in your faith. Isn't that neat? See, you don't need to go to cemetery, I mean, <laughs> seminary for that. Uh, it's easy. You eat from that food group. More prayer, stronger faith. Now, this is the kicker. It's a double-edged sword. Check this out. When you pray, you're building up your most holy faith so that when you pray, heaven opens. Answers come. You see, it's a double. <laughs> you see it there? You pray so you can build up your most holy faith so that when you pray, it's effective, powerful. Answers come. Angels jump. And the devil runs. Amen. So there, it's a du dual purpose there when you pray. It's strengthening, but also bringing the presence of God into your life situation for you when you pray. That's the power of prayer. But we must pray in faith, the Bible says. Nothing wavering. Okay. Oh, hallelujah. Pastor, go, Pastor, go. All right. Pipe down here. What are you looking at, Kyle? Luke 22, 32. Luke 22, 32. Very important. Come on. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Jesus told Peter, I am praying for you that your faith will not fail. Lift your hands right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I pray my faith will not fail. In Jesus' name, amen. That's a legitimate prayer to pray every day. Lord, let this day be a wonderful day and that my faith will not fail. Fail in Jesus' name. Amen. And it won't. Become stronger. Amen. Uh, Kyle, uh, Luke 17, 5, and then 6, please. Oh, this is amazing right here. I got a few more minutes. I know you want to see Jamie again. Yeah, come on, take your time. We want to hear it. Thank you. Amen. Luke 17, 5, and 6. And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Whoa. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Well, they're talking to Jesus, yeah. And any time you talk to Jesus, it's called prayer. Amen. So they were praying, Lord, increase our faith. Lift your hands. They do it. We can do it. Say, Lord, Lord increase my faith Amen. and the faith of my family in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. So there's some prayers you could be praying to strengthen your faith and bring, it back, uh, bring about a good result. Pray for your faith to increase every day when you get up. And then pray that your faith wouldn't fail. And your faith won't fail if you will just feed your faith. Amen. You get into faith failure when it becomes weak because you don't eat. Just like your body. Try not eating for a week and see if you don't become weak. Right? But when you come here, I try to give you as much food as I can. I feed you. You might want to look at me. Open wide. Feed your faith. 
to see you win on the battlefield of life. That's my goal, to see you win on the battlefield of life. I want your winners. That's what we are, winners, not losers. We're the head, not the tail, in Jesus' name. Kyle, Luke 17, 5 and 6, because 6 goes right into 5. People don't know that, but 6 has to do with 5, Kyle. So read 5. No, read 6. No, read. Where is she? Where are you, Rhonda? 6. No, read 6. No, read 5. Rhonda. <laughs> read 5 and 6, Kyle. And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If ye had faith as a grain of mustard there it seed, is. ye might say unto the sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, be thou planted into the sea, and it should obey you. Okay, Jesus, these two verses go together. The disciples come, and, and in context, is talking about unforgiveness, anger, and bitterness. So the disciples say, this is very difficult. And you know how difficult it is. You get bitter against someone. You hold, your heart brings unforgiveness for what they did to you. And you become angry so easily. So the disciples say, Lord, increase our faith so we can win this. Because we need strong faith. Weak faith will give in to bitterness, anger, and so on. And unforgiveness. And Jesus goes on to say, listen, guys, all you need is a mustard seed of faith to move mountains. A mustard seed of faith is in the hand, so small you can't even see it. But yet planted, it comes forth in a mighty, mighty, beautiful, strong tree. So Jesus said a mustard seed of faith will get the job done. Just feed your faith, get that mustard seed. And then it talks about a sycamine tree, not in a positive way. Because in context, he's talking about unforgiveness, bitterness, and anger. So he's saying, this sycamine tree has got to go out of your life. But I want to share some things I found out about the sycamore tree, which is also in the NIV and other translations, the mulberry tree. But it's the sycamore tree, sycamine, sycamore. Yeah, I'm sick of my tree here. <laughs> Why do you laugh at Jamie's stuff, but mine is... Here's some facts about the sycamine tree you might not know. It's interesting. Sycamine tree is very large and has a very deep root system. Roots as big as my body. It's very difficult to uproot bitterness, unforgiveness, anger. A sycamine tree... Its, wor its wood in the Middle East was the preferred wood to use to make caskets. Prolonged unforgiveness, bitterness, and anger will kill you. That tree, if left undone, will be a casket for your soul. A sycamine tree, its fruit, although looks delicious, is very bitter, unedible, poisonous. Isn't that what bitterness, the fruit of bitterness, unforgiveness, and anger is? It's like poison that runs through your body, your mind, your heart, affects your walk with God, affects your relationship with your family and friends. I forbid you to have unforgiveness. I forbid you to have, have bitterness because Jesus has given us a way of escape. It's called a mustard seed of faith. And last, a sycamine tree can only, check this, check it out for yourself, see if I'm telling you. A sycamine tree can only be pollinated, bear this disastrous fruit by wasps, by the devil's stinger himself. And isn't that what the sting of unforgiveness, the sting of bitterness, the sting of anger, 
Isn't that amazing about this? Yeah, that's pretty amazing, Pastor. Yeah. Who's, who's saying those things? They must have a mic. But yet Jesus said, we can, you can rid yourself of this, what seems impossible, rooted, established within you, poisoning you with a mustard seed of faith. Lord, increase our faith that we might speak to that sick and mind tree. Get out of my life. Uproot and be planted into the sea in Jesus' mighty name. Say it with me. Uproot bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, and be planted into the sea in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Somebody clap right now. In Jesus' name. One last thing. Jamie's going to come up and close. Matthew 17. Matthew 17, 14 through 21. Yes, it's a few verses, but it goes fast. I think some things just went in Jesus' mighty name. Faith was working, faith was alive, faith was increasing. And then you pray like that, whoo, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Go ahead. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed, for oftentimes he falleth into the fire. Now, as a parent, you can relate to that. My child's a lunatic. No, 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 no. Relax, lady. Wow. Tough crowd. You didn't treat Jamie like this. Have mercy on my son. The enemy's trying to kill him. Drown him. Throw him in the fire. And 16, watch, the, watch, watch. Go ahead. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. And Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Check it out. Check it out. What happened here? The disciples couldn't do anything. They didn't even have a mustard seed of faith to move that mountain, to move the enemy out of that boy's life. And these men have been walking with Jesus for quite a while, saw him walk on water, raise the dead, and just ask for increased faith. Come on. Isn't that just like us? One minute we're up, one minute we're down. One minute we're strong faith and weak faith. That's because you're eating erratically. Your eating has no consistency. Many people, they grab a hamburger now and, and then some peanuts later, and that's it. And the next day they're having a gorge themselves with ho-hos and ding-dongs and Mike's, I kind of like Mike's. Do you like Mike's, those little things? Don't get me started. And he says, oh, faithless, perverse generation. Let me tell you something. When you're, vo when you're void of faith, in God's sight, it's perverse. should never happen. So they were faithless. That's why they couldn't cast the devil out. That's why they couldn't help and deliver the boy. You get it? Are you with me? has to do with faith. Keep going. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Bring the boy to me, and he took care of it. Next. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? Why can't we cast out the devil? All right, go ahead. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, just remove grain, hence just to a grain of mustard seed. Go ahead. And it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible. Wow. 21. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fast. Uh oh. Here we go. Here's the reason. 
you haven't eaten. Oh, you didn't get that. I'm preaching 30 minutes here and you're not on the same page still. They could not cast the devil out because they were weak in faith. What makes you weak in faith? No food. No word. No prayer. So Jesus said, pray and fast so your faith would be strong and you could get that mustard seed of faith and then it won't be a problem. Nothing's impossible for you. So what was Jesus saying? He's saying, you haven't eaten. You haven't drank. You haven't prayed. You haven't fasted. You haven't gotten into the word. So your faith was void. Your faith was weak. It's like not watering a plant. It becomes what? But if you add water to it, whoop. Come on. Add water to your faith. Get into the word. Pray. It increases your faith. And that's what Jesus told them. You didn't eat. That's why you became faithless. If you would have eaten, you would have had that mustard seed of faith, and you would have delivered the child. So it was kind of a rebuke. Saints, we got to eat. We have to feed our faith. You must to win, to be strong, to run the race, to fight the good fight, to keep the faith. In Jesus' name. Now, that's the second food group, spiritual food group. We have three more. And I'll finish next week with communion because that's one of the food groups. When you eat of the bread and drink of the cup, woo, your faith becomes strong. Do you believe that? Grab that. Grab that cup. Do you have, do you, do you, give me my napkin. Who's going through a trial or trouble right now? Let me just see some hands. Yeah, I thought so. I did that because I didn't want to point you out. But you too? You too? Now you can grab that again. All right? Now, trust in God. Feed your faith. I mean it. I'm going to check. Feed your faith. Get into the word and pray. And when you feed your faith by praying, when you pray, it's strong. It brings a greater effect in Jesus' name. Okay? Now, I preached with this. It's what they call an anointed handkerchief. Not to show me any glory, but if you read Acts 19 when you get home, you're going to go, <gasps> there it is. Read it when you get home. Acts 19. Bless this woman, Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Deliver her from her trials, I pray. Deliver her from her trials in Jesus' mighty name. May she walk above her circumstances, not underneath them, in Jesus' name. And increase her, now I feel this so strong, increase her faith in Jesus' name. You receive it? You're going to read at Acts 19 when you get home? Who else? Raise your hands. I'm going to pray for you as a, corporately. And if Jamie can come on in and get up top, that would be great. I'm going to pray for you corporately. Then Jamie's going to come and close this service out. Oh, it's been a good service. Thank you for coming today. Don't forget tonight. Don't forget tonight. Uh, Jamie will be back and do some songs, praise and worship, in fact. He's going to be our praise and worship leader. And uh, Dave Kuhl will bring a short message. Okay. Jamie, come on up and, and prepare yourself, brother. And I want to pray. If you are going through something, I see your hand back there. You're all the beloved of God. You know that. I see your hand. Lord, I pray for every single person raising their hand in this sanctuary right now, going through a trial or trouble, whether it be some type of sickness or disease, whether it be financial, whether it be emotional, heartbreak, whatever it is. I pray, Lord, that you are lifting that burden because of their faith. Now, Lord, they've been hearing the word of God go forth. It has stirred their faith. It has brought a resolve where they're trusting in you. Now, as we trust in you, I pray heaven will open. 
glory will descend. They will have the desire of their heart. Their petition, their petitionary cry will be answered by the Lord. For he is God. He is God. In Jesus' mighty name. I pray for that healing in Jesus' name. By faith, the prayer of faith shall make the sick person well. Shall deliver them and meet all of their needs. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, somebody clap right now. Everybody stand up. Stand up. Amen. You all look so wonderful and so great. Did you enjoy Jamie here today? Boy, I get, this morning I gave him an open invitation to come anytime he wants. Anytime. I mean, he could just show up. It's good enough because he can pick up a guitar and go, go for it. And it's all good. So I know he has a mama here. Now, my suggestion to Jamie is come visit your mom more. Much more. Really much, much more. And again, <laughs> thank you, Jamie. Jamie's going to close and say what he wants to say, and uh, we'll see you tonight in Jesus' name. I'm going to go buy a microphone today. <laughs> well, I'm coming back Wednesday for food, so. What a, what a great message, huh? Man. So when we die and they lay us to rest, and we go to the place that's the best, I think this is a great song for this area and this church. So what we're going to do is we're just going to all sing this together. Because it, raise your hand if you're over 30. Raise your hand. <laughs> okay. Sierra. <laughs> Okay, if you're if you're over 30, this is a classic. Okay? If you're under 30, this is a brand new song. <laughs> and I want to take the credit for it. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. We're going to go out with a bang. Here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna die and they lay me to rest. I'm gonna go to the place that's the best. When they lay me down to die, your part. We're going on up with the. Hey! Tell yourself, you know it's a must. You gotta have a So you know that when we die, we're going up with the Yeah, I recommend you to the spirit in the sky. That's where we're all gonna go when we die. When I die and the name it the rest, gonna go to the place that's the best. Are you guys ready for that day? I am. All right, guys, on the count of three, give me a big loving faith amen, all right? Here we go. One, two, three. a sinner, we all will sin, but I got a friend in Jesus, so you know that when I die, I'm going up with the Spirit in the sky, yeah, I recommend you to the Spirit in the sky, that's where I'm gonna go when I die, when I die and then lay me to rest, 
gonna go to the place that's the best. We're going up with the spirit in the sky. It's where I'm gonna go when I die. When I die and they lay me to rest. We're gonna go to the place that's the best. We're going to the place that's the best. I recommend you to the spirit in the sky, the spirit in the sky, two, three, the spirit in the sky, two, three, the spirit in the sky, the spirit in the sky. Two, three. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you.